So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Romain Jordan. I'm leading the technical evangelist group at uh, Rubed. And um, today I wanted to talk about network performance. And uh, you know, when we do presentations, we are always told, OK, let's try to find a nice icebreaker, because uh, you need to, to introduce your, a topic. And, um, and uh, Phil, you offered me that on, Wednesday, on Sunday with your tweet about you know, how you, you handle uh, yeah. Hey, that's me. <laughs> yeah, working with the app team, the second I get one successful thing reply. <laughs> and, that was a nice tweet. And when I saw that, I say, wow, that's great, because it's, it's exactly how I've experienced, uh, you know, um, troubleshooting in, um, in, um, in War Room. So um, before, um, before being in this role, I, I was engaged with many large enterprise customers, and uh, they would bring everyone in a big room for many hours or many days. For, for us collectively to troubleshoot an application performance problem. So we had the network guide and database guide, the cloud guy and everyone. And the CIO would tell us, you need to find this problem all together. And, uh, and as a network guy, what would you do? You do the ping. And if the ping works, you say, OK, so it means that I have connectivity. So probably my link is up. Uh, my routing is good. I can check the latency. latency. Latency seems to be good. So what else can I do? Nothing. So I'm gone. Thank, thank you. And that's what Phil uh, explained. And I think it's good. Lived it. But there's much more that we could do as network engineers. And, um, and uh, this leads me to, uh, to other uh, you know, um, uh, reflection about uh, how we handle network performance as, ne as network engineer. And, and going back to uh, the fallacies of distributed computing, so those were uh, you know, coined by a Sun Microsystem in the 90s. I was not even born. No, I was sorry, but uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but um, they were recalled, uh, coined many years ago, and they are still valid. I mean, um, how many times you believe that your network is real reliable, or someone does the assumption that the network is reliable, that latency is minimum, that uh, the bandwidth is, in is infinite, and so on and so forth. And uh, I also thought about okay. What's happening now in the cloud era? So we have SD1, which makes everything more reliable. Indeed, you have multiple uplinks. So, and we are monitoring actively, as Brendan said, the, 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 the performance of each link. So we make this network much more reliable because we are probing, we are able to switch over to one to other to the other. But the network is much more complex than just the, the one piece. And, uh, and also, um, there is much more complexity um, related to, uh, to the cloud, for example. So is the cloud reliable? It's a good question. Um, so uh, three weeks ago, we had a, an interesting problem with one of our cloud providers. So we are, my team is operating the, the demo environment for our ACs worldwide. And we have multiple uh, instances running on a, on a, in the cloud. And uh, we had some performance issues that were re, you know, uh, shared by um, our ACs saying, oh, yeah. I can't do that demo because the latency is really poor. I said, How could that be? Everything was green on my side. I mean, uh, the CPU on my on my device is good. Everything is fine. And then we 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 uh, we did uh, some advanced measure with thanks to our NPM, and we found out that they, yes, there were some interesting issues. And uh, we opened a, a P1 case with uh, with uh, the cloud provider, and eventually, after two days of troubleshooting, they identified that there was a driver problem on their on their side. So yes, the network is reliable, but but there are there are cases where it's not, and uh, and uh, and you can't uh, always believe that everything uh, runs, and and same for um, I can throw as much as bandwidth as I want now because it's cheap and I can get internet and I can put more, I can put uh, a lot of bandwidth to my problems. Does it solve the, the issues? Not necessarily. So that's what I want to talk about today. And this is what we are about, Riverbed. So what we want, what, what, what we have uh, been working on in, in our uh, mission is, is really to work with enterprise customers uh, which, are, which are very distributed um, um, to, and we want to help them um, you know, enhancing their performance for their users. So making sure that application and networking are, work, are, are working together. And, and for that, we use our uh, four pillars, as um, Marco explained uh, early on. So 
I wanted to get back to TCP. It's never, never bad to talk about TCP, right? And, and talk about latency. And BDP, do you remember your TCP courses with BDP? So the bandwidth delay product. So basically, if you follow the, the Wikipedia uh, definition of it, it's, uh, it's the, uh, the product of the data link's capacity, so your bandwidth, uh, and the delay. And that gives you basically the TCP window size. <coughs> so if we think, if we do, uh, if we use that uh, definition and, uh, and we, we try to, uh, to compute or to estimate the bandwidth that uh, a particular workstation can compute, so let's say that uh, a Windows 10 um, laptop, I don't know, I know that you don't have always Windows 10, but, um, but uh, let's say that uh, Windows 10 by default um, offer a 64K um, uh, bytes uh, TCP window. So uh, let's take it. So those are bytes, so I need to multiply by eight. And this is kilos, so uh, I have to, um, to use uh, some uh, fancy math here. And, uh, and I want to divide that by, by latency. So if I go ahead and, and say, oh, I have 10 milliseconds of, of delay, so one, one way delay between my client and my server, what is the bandwidth I would get? So 10 milliseconds, it's 10, 10 minus 3 or 10 minus 2. So 64 uh, by 8, it's 512, 10, 3. 10 minus 2, that makes uh, 5, 12. I hope I'm not boring with math. I always loved math. <laughs> so that makes uh, roughly 51 meg, right? Megabits per second. 51 megs, megabits per second. So with a Windows 10 uh, workstation with the default config, you can get 51 meg with 10 millisecond latency delay. So it's really cool to have so many gig, you know, thanks to your SD1, but uh, if you can't get more out of your uh, server or, or, or workstation, is it worth it? Because it's, it's kind of uh, like you were, you know, driving a super cool sport car, but you can't drive it to the full extent. So Microsoft did a great job because they have uh, also introduced um, TCP auto scaling capabilities. So now, basically, you could potentially move up to, um, to um, at least I do the same math here, but uh, I, do, um, I do the math with um, now what they have. So it's uh, roughly um, up to 60 meg. So 60 meg, it's 10, 6, same math. So that's... Um, 16, 8, so, so it makes 128, 6, then minus 2. So that makes uh, so with auto scaling on TCP, on the TCP stack with uh, on Windows 10, now you could theoretically get up to 12 gig out of network card. So of course you need your network card to be able to do that. But there's much more to do. I mean, uh, that's that's a lot of processing also on the on the on the on the server or the workstation to be able to to pull that. And then the question is, is that is that something that you as a network guy you want to let a system guy to handle? Because there's a direct impact on the, on your network and how you handle that. So isn't it something that you as a network guy you should you should manage? So we have some capabilities here on Windows 10. That's cool. You need to do the tuning. And I've been engaged in a couple of engagement uh, on a, a couple of problems with, uh, so some customers were complaining about bad performance. And this is because of auto scaling for certain application that are a bit legacy. That could, that could impact the performance, right? So this is cool. This is available, but it doesn't solve all the problem. And sometimes it introduces some problems. So I want to, for you to spark that for the moment. And let's talk about MTU. So 
So you talk about override earlier. Yes, with SD1, we introduce override. So depending, I mean, all vendors are doing it. So we do it, everyone else do it, does it. And, and uh, the problem with MTU is that um, you need to be able to, um, to handle that correctly. So um, the traffic which is uh, sent across your LAN is probably the default Ethernet, uh, unless you have jumbo frames. But, uh, so that would be uh, 1,500 uh, bytes, you know, for, for a frame. That's cool, but uh, but your your SD1 MTU is probably around 1300. So, what happens here? You need to to negotiate that with uh, with your clients. It's not really a negotiation, by the way, and uh, not all TCP stack are behaving uh, in a good way, and that has a direct impact on performance. So sometimes you would have to fragment. Sometimes you can't. You can't. Uh, do you remember your TCP session, your TCP course on um, on MSS override? So MSS override is not a negotiation at all. It's something that the the, the router or the SD1 appliance would say, oh, you need to to move down your MSS, but the client was, doesn't have to cope with that. And if he does not, the the, the router or the SD1 appliance would do the, the fragmentation, and it would let the server side, the server, doing the repacking and everything. So when you talk to, when you, you work with uh, modern applications like uh, everything which is cloud native now and working uh, with new uh, TCP stack, yes, it works. Thank God. But in the enterprise world, as we said, we have a lot of legacy apps because uh, you can't transform your business uh, overnight. You, you will still operate your old application and, and the migration phase will take forever. But so you need on one hand as network guys to be able to enable the cloud adoption and that's why you, you are going SD-WAN and you are interconnecting everything. But on the other side, you still need to, to, uh, to support legacy apps. And those legacy apps are not necessarily, you know, um, working with, uh, with those mechanisms, or, or they could be impacted in terms of performance uh, because of the MTU. So I just wanted to, to bring that up because um, in many cases, so not if you are an SMB operating in one country, small country, or one state in the US, you probably don't need any more one up, that's clear. But for enterprise customers that are very distributed and they want to handle network performance, one acceleration, I don't like one of. One acceleration is, is the answer because of the mechanism that we do. So the case for one optimization is that, yes, study of, not enough bandwidth, that's, that's still valid. So over satellites, over LTE, the fact that uh, one acceleration can help on those, it's, it's cool. But with SD1, SD1 is bringing a lot of bandwidth. That, that's, that's really neat. Transport protocol chattiness, that's not something that SD1 handles. And uh, application protocol inefficiencies, that's also something which is uh, not, not taken care of uh, by, by, um, by SD1, and where, where latency is really impacting the performance. So if you want, as a network engineer, to uh, take care of uh, the network performance as a, as a wall, you don't just throw more bandwidth at your problems. You have to take it holistically and, and take care of latency and how you, you can all, all handle that problem. So the way we work, the way the market works, <laughs> the, the, the technology works, uh, is that uh, you would have to, um, to uh, insert appliances on both sides of the network, and, uh, and those appliances can be hardware appliances, that's the traditional way, but it can be virtual, it can be cloud, it can be a client-based, so it could, it's, it's a software that runs on my laptop as an agent that intercepts all my connection and does the optimization from my laptop to a data center. A data center is now in the cloud, on-premises, on or somewhere else. So, uh, so you have those boxes inserted some way on your, on your network and they are intercepting, intercepting the connection, it has to be transparent for the client and the server. And actually what we do is that we are acting as a TCP proxy 
and we are creating three different TCP sessions. And because we are doing that, this is how we can handle MTU, this is how we can handle latency, and the problem with, uh, with the TCP window, because this particular appliance here, this box on the network, will do all the magic for you. So you don't have to tune your Windows 10 or your Mac to, to, um, to handle the big bandwidth, because this guy will actively measure the latency and, 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 and say, okay, do I really need to accelerate? If, if the latency is low between the client and, and that particular server, there's no need for accelerating traffic, so we won't do it. If the latency is impacting the performance, then yes, it, it, kicks, it, it kicks in, and then we, we enhance the performance. The TCP window, we are going to increase it up to one gig of TCP window. And because we have very aggressive retransmission mechanisms, we can cope with uh, some very, diffi very difficult environment like satellites. So the other mechanism that we, we are implementing here is, the, is what we call data, data streamlining. It's a fancy word to say we are doing DDoP and caching, right? So basically, there's a request coming from clients that goes across the network to the data center to the servers that are you know, on-premises or in the cloud. And the data is sent. We do all our magic. We do DDoP and everything. And we send references or few, few bytes across the network. So we are able to dramatically decrease the, um, the, the footprint on the network. And we have been doing that for ages. I mean, since the inception of Riverbed, we have been doing that. And we have been very successful. And we have been uh, you know, in the Magic Quadrant for many years as a leader. And of course, we re reconstruct the files and the data on the other side of the network. TCP transport streamlining is, again, the fancy word for uh, explaining what we do for BDP, for uh, for uh, enhancing the TCP window, for, uh, for making sure that uh, we are doing selective acknowledgement and everything across the network. So if you have a lot of latency, we make TCP better to work across the latency, basically. So we are able to mitigate the impact of latency. We are also creating some connection pool, so meaning that uh, we have a pool of connections that are always on that are just waiting for someone to come in and ask for something, so we don't have the, the TCP um, end check to go across the network. So it's there already. So the, uh, the TCP connection will be terminated here on the client directly. It doesn't have to cross the network because we know that the, on the other side, we have another appliance and it's discovered automatically. We don't have to do some magic peering or black magic peering. It's done. And again, it works for hardware appliances, for virtual appliances, for clients like my Steel and Mobile, uh, and, and also uh, appliances in the cloud. Very quickly, this is TCP, the, the regular TCP. To be fair, Windows 10 is much better than, than uh, it used to be, so it's not as, as bad as this. But, uh, but, uh, but here, uh, we, we have a, a very aggressive uh, mechanism, which, I, which we call uh, ISP TCP, which is also available on, on Linux, by the way. And, um, and uh, it makes um, you know, um, avoiding the, um, uh, the slow start of TCP and uh, we are able to, um, to, um, to handle retransmission in a better way so we don't have to uh, drop the, the throughput uh, every time we have a retransmission. This application, uh, WAN acceleration or optimization, is part of your SD-WAN application? It's a separate application or how you packaged it? So uh, you have the choice. So we have been uh, shipping uh, Steelhead, so our one acceleration uh, Forever, <laughs> I mean, uh, since tw uh, 2004, we have shipping. We have been shipping appliances, so um, so um, we uh, we can. We have many customers. We have more than 30,000 customers worldwide using our technology already, and uh, and as as a single appliance. And we have appliances that are uh, hybrid, so the stick, so the stick connect EX appliances and the XX80 series of it um, is uh, hybrid, so you can, you can run uh, one acceleration together with SD-WAN. You have two kinds of 
box. One is only van optimization, other is hybrid. And some that are SD1 only. Yeah. So depending on the customer requirements, I mean, if you are, you know, uh, if you don't need one acceleration mechanism because you are operating in a small footprint, ge geographic uh, called, uh, footprint, so you don't need, you, don't, you are not impacted by latency, so one acceleration doesn't make sense for you, that's fine. You can go ahead and, and just uh, uh, deploy SD-WAN. But if you are highly distributed as many of our customers, like uh, UN agencies or you know, big manufacturing companies having factories in, uh, in many countries and, and sending a big you know, cat files and everything, this is where they are benefiting a lot and, and they need an hybrid solution. Do you guys have public cloud or uh, PaaS SaaS gateways to enable optimization of connections? That's the topic of the next session. Great. Segway guys. <laughs> yeah, thanks for segue. It's too early. We'll let you pivot. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Um, so we do our magic and uh, yeah, we, we optimize the CPU workload. We are repacking the packets. So we are every time we send a packet, we are making sure that the data that we are sending is packed. So again, again to avoid some uh, delays and, and the impact of latency. And finally, and that would be my segue to application performance. That's, that's the application streamlining. So we have been unique uh, from our inception because we, we wanted to tackle the, the problem at the application level, not only at the TCP level, not only at the data level with, uh, with, uh, with the caching and the duplication. We are also managing it at the application level. So basically, we understand protocols, and we are investing a lot of uh, our uh, R&D in better understanding applications, so to enhance them because they have not necessarily been designed to operate on uh, on long distance, uh, you know, uh, networks. So, uh, so basically, what we do is that um, we are confining the uh, the 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 communication between the server and the, the server side stillhead, like here, and, and between the client and the client side stillhead. So we have our optimized stack for, uh, for our application. And, uh, and that's the way we are able to, um, to deliver the best end user performance at the end of the day, because we are, you know, we are, make, we are making actually the, the application less chatty. So there's less round trips on the network, so they are less impacted by latency. We don't, we don't remove latency, we are not gods. We, it's speed of light, there's no, nothing magic about what we do, besides the fact that we are reducing the number of application turns on the network. That's, that's where the magic uh, comes from. Latency is still latency. We are not reducing latency from 100 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds. That would be great. That would be a super pattern to have, but we don't have it yet. So application streamlining, we are able to optimize many applications. So uh, all the, the, the Microsoft, uh, Microsoft file sharing uh, protocols, even if they are uh, encrypted, even if they are signed, we can, we can handle that because we have been working with Microsoft for many years. Uh, we are able to optimize Outlook and uh, Exchange Mappy over HTTPS uh, and uh, all the new protocols that uh, are implemented in Office 55. We are able to uh, accelerate uh, HTTPS and HTTP2. So we, are, we have a, a very nice way of intercepting uh, TLS 1.2 traffic and being part of the security um, uh, model. So, um, so we, we play nicely with that. We are able to uh, decrypt, re-encrypt the traffic in a nicely way without the need to send private keys all over the place, which is insecure. We don't do that. Um, so, uh, and we are able to support HTTP2, SharePoint, and, uh, and uh, other applications that uh, we see in enterprise networks, and more to come. Oh, uh, before you move on, actually, yeah. on that slide, um, we had a question about um, working with encrypted traffic. <coughs> so, uh, I, I've worked with Riverbed in the past, and this was one of the pain points was deploying certificates across the infrastructure to be able to intercept uh, TLS traffic at that time. So uh, is this still the method? Uh, so, so it you're was deploying a CA with a signing authority. So if you want, if you want, I mean, that's the trusted model of, of TLS, right? You need to have a, a certificate authority to, that your clients uh, will trust. 
otherwise you would, you would get some uh, messages. So we have enhanced this mechanism uh, over time, so we are able to play nicely with your PKI, with your certificate authority. So if you have one, we can integrate with them, uh, with it and, and create uh, uh, certificates uh, with, with this, so um, we would communicate directly with it. We are able, so we have been working also, uh, there was a, a, there were a lot of demand coming from um, um, federal or bank, um, they wanted us to work with um, HSM. So basically it's a vault where you, you have all your private private certificates and we, we, we are able to integrate with those. So um, the certificates are delivered to us on a, on, on a connection basis. So we don't own anything, we just uh, we are just given by the HSM the certificate so we can decrypt, re-encrypt uh, on, the, on a per session basis. But what has been always there on our plans is the, the fact that it's only the service side, so the, the, the appliance on the data center, which require the certificates to be installed on. And then we have a, a, a really interesting mechanism to, uh, to deliver um, additional keys to our client still. So we do SSL interception at the branch and, the, and at, the, at the server level. So to answer your question, um, we are working to, I mean, we have been working on enhancing this, uh, this mechanism over time. We are able to support TLS 1.2 and, uh, and uh, we are working on uh, the integration with 1.3 at the moment and make, you know, uh, less painful but secure to everybody. Thanks. Is there a, a timeline, a roadmap for 1.3 integration, TLS 1.3? I don't know whether we can talk about it, but uh, but uh, it's actively in in the work for for a few months. Okay, thanks. And maybe you're still covering this, but with the application acceleration, you need a steelhead kind of on both both sides to do this, correct? Yes. Okay. And we are going. Thanks for the segue. That was the time. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So, uh, ah, I wanted to discuss about that before. Sorry, it just take me five minutes and I talk about this very topic. SD1 and yeah. one acceleration better together. So, there's a lot of thought out there about how SD1 and one can work together or not work together. And uh, I understand some, some vendors' frustration because they are not able to, to deliver that performance. So, they say that uh, there's no need for one-up. I mean, as I said earlier, network performance, it's about resiliency, and that's what SD1 provides. <laughs> it's about bandwidth. Yes, you can improve your, you can increase your bandwidth virtually, increase it with, uh, with uh, more uplinks thanks to SD1. But latency mitigation is not something that SD1 can cover. Of course, because of, you know, for, for SaaS apps and application, uh, you know, web-based application, the fact that you can direct to net instead of backhauling all the traffic, potentially you have le less latency. When, when, you have, once, when you have your Office 55 tenant in the US and your users are in Australia, they are still very much impacted by latency in, in any case. And this is where we help. So we help on the bandwidth side and on the latency mitigation, but also on the resilience, we make the, the, the network operating better. And, and that works very well with SD-WAN. So how can we make them working together? So there are a few challenges, that's true. The, the, the first challenge is um, how we integrate in terms of uh, layer three, layer four, visibility, so SD1 can operate, and also in terms of on, on, the, on, the, on the DPI side. So Steelhead has been able to do it forever, basically. We had that challenge also 15 years ago when we needed to integrate with um, MPLS routers because they wanted to apply QoS. And, and by default, Steelhead will, will, uh, will, uh, see, will uh, you know, operate on port um, 7800 with, uh, with our own IP addresses of the Steelhead. But, but long time ago, we have already implemented what we call um, full transparency or port transparency, depending on what we want to show. But full transparency works very well with uh, firewalls because we have also the ability to uh, reset the connection and restart the connection. 
and and we are we are keeping the ports and the IP address across the network. So it's fully transparent from this point of view. So if you have if you are defining any L3 L4 policies, no problem at all. That will work. Out of the box, nothing to do. What about DPI? So DPI, of course, SD1 is great at recognizing application, and that's the way you are going to handle all your, you know, uh, your traffic path steering policies. You need to recognize that uh, this is Office 55 or this is Citrix or whatever app. So you need you need that. The challenge is that because of all the magic that we are doing. You know, we are caching, we are packing the pack, we are compressing, we are doing a lot of stuff. The DPI engine doesn't work in this context. So how to, on, on the SD1 side, but the student is able to recognize the app. That's what he does to apply the policies. So it can pass on the DPI ID to the SD1 appliance. That's what we have implemented with our box, and that's what we are trying to do with other vendors. Another option is to, and, and this is not available to all SD1 vendors, but another option is to, um, to do some service chaining where the steelhead is actually deployed virtually in path, as we call it, meaning that the packet will, will go on the SD1 appliance, will be recognized with DPI and everything, we create the policy, and we say, oh, the policy is that next step, I go to the steelhead to be optimized. And because of transparency, of the full transparency, this box is able to track that particular session and say, oh, I set it here, it's optimized, but I know it's still my particular application that I call, I don't know, um, Citrix, for example, not Citrix, but uh, let's say Exchange, for example. And I, I, can, I, I know that this packet that comes back to me, it's, it's, um, it's Exchange because I recognized it before. So I can still apply all my policies, my security policies and everything. If you, th if you think about your, all the, the traffic which is uh, destined to the web or SaaS, because they are, they are public IP addresses, your, 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 uh, your policies will still work. So that's not a problem. And we have been working with a very large enterprise and, and service providers to help them integrate our solution with other SD1 vendors. So overall, network performance is much more than just bandwidth and pings. There's much more that we can do as network engineers to improve the performance of networks and, and eventually end users. Latency is still a killer. Yes, all the, uh, the cloud providers are claiming that uh, they want to deliver um, you know, um, uh, services less than 50 milliseconds away. Uh, they will be 15 milliseconds away from, uh, uh, from the clients. But the way we build application today is not, it's not the way that uh, will enhance the, you know, or allow that you are 15, 15 milliseconds away from your clients. Because uh, your instance will run probably in, in, in Amsterdam if you are based in Europe, but your users are, are in Australia, in Africa, and everywhere. So maybe it will respond very quicker to pings because they have any cast type of technology that will respond in their pop close to them. But eventually, you have to go through their network all the way up to Europe if you are hosting in Europe, and, uh, and, and latency is still there. So there's no way around. And, and one acceleration is very relevant for our distributed enterprise. And, and, uh, and we are working very actively with them to enhance uh, what we do, and we are actively engaged to understand their challenges when they are adopting the cloud, which leads me to the next session.